Hello, I'm Micah Woods and this is the ATC Double Cut. I'm going to talk about one of the posts on the ATC blog that's related to drought and how different grasses perform under drought and I'm going to link that, I'm going to make a connection between that and the KBC Augusta Golf Tournament which was held at Kea Golf Club last week. You may have seen that I shared a lot of information if you follow me on Twitter where I'm at Asian Turfgrass or if you follow my Instagram account where I'm at Asian Turfgrass or if you subscribe to my YouTube channel uh, where I'm Asian Turfgrass Center. You may have seen that I shared some videos and some photos and some charts and some data and some information about the KBC Augusta Golf Tournament which was held at Kea Golf Club last week. In fact, there was uh, a video or two that I shared with Andrew McDaniel, uh, who is the golf course superintendent there. And he described some of the work that they do and what was going to be happening during the week. I find it fascinating for so many reasons. And uh, two episodes ago, I explained why it's a lot more than the average golf tournament. So you can listen to that ATC double cut to, uh, to hear the details. But in short, uh, I think it's very interesting to produce zoysia grass greens for professional tournament play and to try to make the ball roll and the ball bounce as good as possible. And it's, it requires a lot of work on zoysia because of the characteristics of that grass. And um, so I, I, I make some measurements. I put some pictures together. Let's see, how should we do this? Uh, I'll start off by describing some of the things that happened during the tournament. And then I'll go to the blog post that's going to get the double cut treatment, maybe show some video highlights from the tournament and describe them for those of you who are listening. Although I will say that this would be a, a particularly good episode to watch on YouTube. If you are one of the listeners to this show who listen to it as a podcast, I think a lot of the shows are equally good, perhaps even better to just listen to than they are to watch. But with this one, I did put some pictures and charts together that I will describe, but it might be interesting for you to reference them at some point if you're at all interested. The photo that's on the screen right now is the 11th hole at Kea Golf Club and this was on Sunday morning the day before the first practice round. So this was seven days prior to the final round and it had rained 80 millimeters the uh, on uh, early Sunday morning something like two or three in the morning, a nice thunderstorm came through, dropped 80 millimeters of rain, which is just over three inches in a couple of hours. And that washed out the bunkers a bit, but the course is on a sandy site. So it drains pretty well. They could still play golf that day. There was just a little bit of extra work to do in the bunkers, but we could consider that the soils on Sunday morning of, um, the day before tournament week, the soils would be saturated. Uh, no, 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 no. That's the, uh, the soils would be at field capacity. So, um, because the water goes down. So yeah, it would have been saturated during the rainfall, but then the water goes down, the, uh, the excess water drains and the soils would be at field capacity. And when I measured the soil water content of the putting greens, that morning, on that Sunday morning, the average soil water content was 21.8%. So we could consider the field capacity, let's just say that the field capacity is 22%. Now, this starts getting to one of the things that I think is so interesting about this golf course and this golf tournament and this particular grass on the greens, and that is... The greens were cored, they were core aerified in 2020. They were not, uh, no holes were punched of any sort, solid or hollow tine, 
in 2021 or in 2022. And in 2021 and in 2022 this year, the Greens were top dressed one time each with just a what you might call a medium to heavy top dressing just once. Once in 2021, once in 2022. And this has been the general maintenance that's been conducted there since about 2017. So we're going on five or six years in which the greens have been hollow tine aerified one time with the holes filled with sand. And otherwise, they've been getting a verticut or two verticut treatments per year combined with sand top dressing. Just a single or a uh, a single sand top dressing event per year or two sand top dressing events per year. And it surprises me that a putting green surface that gets that limited amount of sand and that limited amount of organic matter removal does not increase to a field capacity of something like 28% or 35%. So it, it may be the type of sand that's used there, although I want to think that it is by controlling the growth, supplying a limited amount of nitrogen fertilizer, so not encouraging the grass to grow more than it needs to, allows the soil microbes to break down a lot of the organic matter and it just maintains a root zone that has a relatively low water holding capacity, 22%, because that's not very much plant available water when you get in a sandy root zone and go down to the wilting point that's often going to be around 10%. Now, I measured this with the TDR350, and I did that with the probes or the, the rods that are 75 centimeters in depth about three inches in depth so that is the situation that the course was in on the sunday morning prior to tournament week and then it turned out the weather was just brilliant all through the week the um the next image i show was towards the end of the week there is not a green covered in water. It's a green with uh, partial clouds, partial sun. That is the uh, 18th hole, although it's played as the ninth hole for the tournament. And it it was really interesting for me to work at KBC Augusta this year because I've been working at that tournament every year since 2013 with... Uh, with the exception of last year, uh, 2021, I did not make it to Japan, but 2013, 14, 15, so on, uh, all those years, I was working at the tournament, and every year, the weather uh, manages to be horrendous <laughs> somehow. So uh, it's been, there's been typhoons that come through, there has been untimely and unforecasted rain, uh, there has been untimely and forecasted rain there has been uh, drought followed by uh, heavy rain all kinds of problems that make it difficult to have a really smooth tournament week and this year it just worked out really well and it was very smooth and I had time to document much of that which I'm showing now uh, a screenshot of my um, YouTube videos my my Asian turf grass center YouTube page and there are one, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like there were 13 videos that I uploaded in the last week. And I think 12 of them are related to the KBC Augusta tournament. And they're related to things like the way that the data are collected, the different grass types that are used, how the bunkers are maintained, how, how the greens are mowed, how the clipping volume is measured, all kinds of things. So I would encourage you to check those out. A lot of those are just one minute or less videos what youtube calls shorts and i put those together not to show things that i think everybody uh would have seen before 
but to show things that might be a little bit unique to Japanese golf course maintenance or unique to this particular tournament. So I'm not just showing like, uh, this is fairway mowing, right? <laughs> Everybody's seen fairway mowing, but this is um, trying to show the things that I think might be a little bit interesting. So uh, there's a lot of videos there and I, I'll get to show the results uh, soon, but as Joe Galati would say, that uh, was a little bit of a technical problem, but I am back and I am going to share my screen. Um, and I, I want to share the blog post that I'm giving the double cut treatment. And the, the one that's getting the double cut treatment today is about drought performance of warm season turf grasses. Now, the reason why I want to talk about this one at the same time that I'm talking about the review of the KBC Augusta Golf Tournament is remember that the field capacity was 22%. That's what we measured after the greens received 80 millimeters of rain on the Sunday before the tournament. So we know they're at field capacity on that Sunday morning when I measured the average at 21.8%. We'll just round that up and call the field capacity 22%. Now, you might think if zoysia was a particularly drought tolerant grass, that after it got 80 millimeters of rain on the Sunday before the tournament, and then on Wednesday, the practice round day, it got an additional 19 millimeters of rain that fell on the course. In fact, the pro am was shortened to only nine holes because of the rain and lightning in the area. So during the tournament week, there were 80 plus 19 equals 99 millimeters of rain. That is four inches of rain. So in the eight days from Sunday prior to the tournament to the Sunday uh, at the the Sunday... The, for the final round, there were four inches of rain or 99 millimeters of precipitation. And you might think that that would not require any irrigation. But the thing with zoysia is it's not very drought tolerant. Now, you might hear sometimes that it is. And you hear people saying that zoysia uses 50% less water than Bermuda grass or things like that which is just not the case. And there's so much evidence that shows that zoysia performs particularly poorly when it comes to uh, drought. So I would like to explain an article that I read recently, and I wrote about it on the blog. I will put a direct link to this in the description or in the show notes. The post is titled, Drought performance of warm season turf grasses. And this study looked at St. Augustine grass, which is Stenotaphrum secundatum, and zoysia grass, and Bermuda grass, and seashore paspalum. So it looked at four grasses. It did this over three years, and it reports on results from the state of Georgia. And it's an article that was written by Katuwal et al., titled Multi-Locational Cleaning Identifies New Drought Tolerant Warm Season Turf Grasses. When I read that article, um, I found a few interesting quotes and the way that the results came out did not really surprise me because it matches with what I've observed with warm season grasses in East and Southeast Asia and in the United States and in other parts of the world, as they are growing side by side or one is invading the other, when irrigation is restricted or drought occurs or drought stress is imposed, one will see this happen. So zoysia grass stood out and not in a good way. Here is a quote from that article. When comparing the four warm season turf grass species by averaging across genotypes within individual species, zoysia grass 
always ranked in the lowest statistical group for all variables measured, including the percent of initial turf quality. Now, the way this study was done, I, I stopped the quote here and interject with some of my own commentary. Uh, that variable or that measurement was percent of initial turf quality. What they did is they kept the turf well irrigated and they measured the quality when it was irrigated with enough water and then they imposed drought stress and they measured what happened as it dried down. So the comparison was always to what it was at the start of the drought stress period. So zoysia grass from the time that it uh, was irrigated to the time that drought stress was imposed, it was in the lowest statistical group for percent of initial turf quality. I'm going back to quoting again, percent of initial normalized difference vegetation index, percent of initial dark green color index, percent of initial green cover, and number of days of dry down required to reduce green cover to 50% of the initial value. These findings suggest that zoysia grass was the most drought sensitive of the warm season species evaluated in this study. So you can get a link to that article and you can read more about it and how it was conducted and how the St. Augustine grass performed the best and Bermuda grass and seashore paspalum somewhere in between and get all the details of just how um, how different the grasses were if you if you are interested in that you can you can so that is um, it's relevant to this because at Kea Golf Club even though it rained four inches during the tournament week even though it rained 99 millimeters during during that week uh, Andrew was quite concerned. Andrew, the golf course superintendent, was quite concerned that he would have to add water. And I, of course, don't want him to add water, except, you know, you have to keep the grass alive. You have to keep the grass from wilting because if soja wilts, especially when it is at a putting green height, it takes forever to come back. And by forever, I mean months if it wilts enough at at a low height and if you put traffic across it it is not a good thing but i always want the greens to be as firm as possible so that it provides a nice challenging test for the professional golfers and so that the balls uh, uh, hit from the fairway will react and be able to stop on the greens but so that shots hit from the rough will be penalized and the ball may bounce over the green and certainly would be more difficult to control the shot. It would be more difficult to control the shot and have it stop on the green. So I think this would be a nice time to show another, let's see, just bear with me. I've, I've got so many things I'm, I'm wanting to show. I'm gonna to try to bring up a video now. This is a highlight video from the KBC television channel, which is the, um, they put on the tournament. That's why it's called the KBC Augusta tournament. They put together this four minute highlight video with some shots. I'm not gonna play the entire video, but I will play enough of it to show a couple of balls bouncing as they land on the greens, just to give you an idea of, of how the ball reacts and show a few putts so you can see with professional camera work, which uh, my videos that, that I will also encourage you to watch on my YouTube channel, those are not professional camera work. And uh, perhaps this one from KBC, uh, you can see a little bit better. So this starts off, um, let's see. So they're showing the scenery of the course. Let me show one other cool thing. Did you know that you can do auto translate into any language? So right now, this is a Japanese video. It's it's from the, the Japanese television station. So of course it's in Japanese. Um, and I've got the subtitles set or the closed captioning set to be 
Japanese uh, to English, but I can go to auto translate and I could say, so I'm scrolling down here. I could do Bosnian, Bulgarian. Let me, let me put this into Fran French. So I, I select French here. So now it is going to show the closed captioning in French. I know some people who watch this or listen are not native English speakers. And it may be useful for you, if you're interested in what I'm talking about, to watch the YouTube videos um, that I produce with some of this automatic translation enabled. So I'll play this. So they're showing Ryo Ishikawa now. And he's going to hit shot. This is a wedge from the... So um, he almost made an eagle. He's hitting a wedge from... He's not in the fairway, is he? He's, let me go back a little bit. So he starts this. He's, he's not in the deep rough. He's in the... He's hitting this shot from the... He's in the, the first cut of rough, the, the cleanup pass around the fairways. Um, the step cut, whatever that's called. Uh, and that was mown at about 30 millimeters. So he's, he's got a decent lie. He's hitting a wedge shot and the ball lands on the green and it bounces and hits off the flag stick about halfway up. And almost So, that, that's the left firmness. Now this is on the fourth hole, or 13th of the tournament. He's got a 25 oh, oh, This is interesting for me, um, of course, because I'm measuring a lot of those data. And for me, uh, I'm trying to assess how the ball's bouncing, and I'm, I'm using measuring tools to do that and i want to make sure that the measuring tools that i'm using the measurements that i'm making are related to the way that the ball actually reacts on the greens as the pros are playing i'm showing on the screen some of the tools and i have a video about that which i would encourage you to watch uh, that in one minute goes through and explains how i use each of those what i measure this is a CLEG for firmness, a TDR350, a stint meter, and some temperature measuring tools. And this week, this is the soil water content starting from Monday um, of tournament week through to Sunday of tournament week. And then on the Wednesday, remember, it rained an additional 19 millimeters. So the soil water content went back up on Thursday morning to 18.9%. And then it was able to dry down. There was no more rain from Thursday through to Sunday. So it went down uh, about 3% from 18.9 to 15.9 from Thursday to Friday. And then it went down a little bit on Saturday from 15.9 to 14.4 and then on Sunday morning it was down to 12.3 but Andrew was already out hand watering on the Friday night just two days after they'd had 19 millimeters almost an inch of rain and uh, I think it's interesting to note that zoysia in this type of soil requires frequent irrigation. So that's the connection that I have with that post that I give the double cut treatment. And it just worked out perfect to get rain that was like that because um, the course went into the week, the soils went into the week at field capacity. They were allowed to dry down and then they got that natural rainfall on the Wednesday, which was right before the tournament round started. So that 
uh, enabled Andrew to not use the sprinklers and he just applied a little bit of irrigation through hand watering and he did that on uh, Friday night or Friday end of day and Saturday after play and then on Sunday night uh, the sprinklers were turned on so that uh, that was certainly the best out of all the KBC Augusta tournaments that I have been involved with this was the best in terms of keeping being able to keep the soil water content relatively low to keep the soil water content uh, somewhat in the control of the turf grass managers uh, because if you you see on this chart I'm comparing it to the last tournament that I worked out which was the data from 2019 in 2019 the soil was uh, basically at field capacity on one uh, one two three four days there were it was raining <laughs> most of the week so the soil was basically at field capacity on Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday and Sunday and it's difficult to get the firmness levels that you want when the the greens tend to be a little bit firmer when they dry down a little bit so if we do look at what the firmness turned out to be it was 93 and as as an average with the clegg on the monday morning of the tournament the first practice round and it went up as it dried down from uh monday to tuesday to wednesday it went up from 93 to 102 then after that rain on wednesday it dropped down to 97 on thursday and then it went back up to 102 on saturday and all the way up to 108 as it got a little bit drier on sunday so that was just about perfect and that 108 was the firmest measurement on average this is the average of some key greens that i've been measuring year after year that 108 average is the highest the the firmest average across all the greens that i have measured in all the years of doing this and i think for me uh it's not such a surprise anymore because I kind of, I've been do, collecting the data enough and uh, I realize how it's probably going to turn out. But when I first went there in 2013, 2014, I, I never would have thought that only top dressing once a year and not aerifying and just uh, mowing and rolling and putting a reasonable amount of fertilizer and uh just growing the grass and and uh trying not to grow it too fast but uh not cultivating very much not putting very much sand top dressing i never would have thought that that would lead to uh these types of surfaces where we can have really good tournament level firmness where the ball's landing with a wedge shot and bouncing up halfway up the flag stick and if you watch that entire video which i will put a link to if you watch that entire KBC highlight video, which is only four minutes, you'll see a number of other shots and you'll see what the ball reaction is. And it's it's not like the balls are bounding off the greens. Uh, it's not that firm, but it's it just, uh, for me, it's perfectly firm for this type of golf course and for this type of professional golf tournament. Now, the green speeds uh, are what I'm showing in the next chart. And it started off the week at 10.2 feet and ended the week at 11 and a half feet. And the tournament days, Thursday was 11 feet, Friday was 11 feet, Saturday was 11.1, Sunday it went up to 11.5. It's interesting that that's pretty well correlated with the clipping volume. Uh, the clipping volume, I think, was 999 on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then it dropped down to eight on Sunday and sure enough the green speed went up when the clipping volume went down um, these numbers when we look at it on a chart it seems like you know 11 to 11.5 it looks like those are real differences but remember that a golf ball when it makes one revolution is uh, what is it I think it's about 13 centimeters or 5.3 inches so basically one foot 
is well half a foot is about one revolution of the golf ball it's uh and half a foot would be about one revolution of the golf ball and one foot would be two revolutions of the golf ball so it's if you think of it in those terms half a foot is not very much and in this case we're talking about four tenths of a foot so it's less than one revolution of the golf ball difference between Saturday and Sunday. Now, it's interesting also, I, I talked about this in a previous double cut, that zoysia greens are difficult to get fast. And in particular, this type of zoysia is difficult to get fast. I think the tropical types of zoysia are easier to get fast because they can be cut a little bit shorter and they have a more prostrate growth habit, which I think leads to better ball roll. It can be a challenge with these coarser bladed and more upright zoysias with really stiff leaves. Now, all zoysias have really stiff leaves, but you really want to look at the leaf orientation, I think, when it comes to quality of ball roll. And if you can get it more prostrate and less upright, that is likely going to lead to better ball roll. These green speeds were achieved with daily double cuts and rolls in the morning. And then in the afternoons, they got a single cut with the triplex, actually a circle cut with the triplex, followed by a roll. So um, it's this is something that uh, that is challenging it's challenging to get the the green speed on zoysia but this is perfect again for this moment and i i think that 11.5 is is the fastest that it's been uh in the morning for any of the tournaments that i've measured i mean any of the kbc augusta tournaments that i've measured so that was good and then something that i started doing uh about 18 months ago and this was my first KBC Augusta tournament to measure this was the bobble test. So I show in this chart, the bobble test scores, which were at 7.8 on average at the start of the week. And they went up to 8.5 by Thursday on average, and then 8.5, 8.4, 8.4, 8.8, 8.8 8 .8 was the value on Sunday morning. Now I have a very critical eye. So I'm, I'm looking for any, imperfections i'm not trying to find a way to give a 10 or a 9 which would be uh 10 would be a absolutely perfect roll a 9 would be a roll that's so good that i can't quite tell if it's perfect uh, but i don't really see any deviations but it's not obviously perfect an 8 has a little bit of chatter at an isolated instance in the roll or it will have a little bit of snaking at an isolated instance in the roll. But the way that the way that that works is it's usually so isolated that the ball doesn't really go offline. So it's just the the roll doesn't look so good because it's got some type of deviation from a true roll on it, but the ball still ends up in the same place. Once you get below an 8 and you start uh, having sevens and sixes now the ball is chattering or snaking at multiple locations in the roll and i think that's where we would see the ball not finish where we would expect it to so for me anything above an eight is going to be acceptable and ideally we'd be up in the high eights which this was borderline it's it's uh, 8.4 to 8.8 .8 during the tournament days so that's certainly something that we could try to improve but i think it's challenging with zoysia because you have to do a tremendous amount of work to deal with those stiff leaf blades in order to make it smooth enough for the ball to have a really true roll across those surfaces so that uh that's the summary of the data that i collected and it was just a great pleasure to be there and to see the the beautiful bunkers. I've got another video I did with Quinn Thompson, who uh, built some of those bunkers together with Keith Cotton on the 
project that was led by Paul Jansen. And this was my first time back at Kea Golf Club after that project has been had been completed. And it was quite nice to see those bunkers looking so good and to see them not being washed out uh, during the tournament, which often we have to deal with that kind of thing. So it was it was fun. This is a great big bunker on the front right of 17. And it was it was nice to see the course looking so good to see so many blue skies and to see the players having such a good time and enjoying the course that was prepared so well for play and to have those timely rains that allowed this rather drought intolerant grass to really shine during the tournament and allowed Andrew McDaniel and the golf course maintenance team to adjust the work to optimize the playability and to produce a course that looked really good and played really good during the tournament days. So that's, uh, that's kind of wrapping up. I've got a couple, um, excuse me, I've got a couple more videos that I'll share uh, coming up, um, some cart ride videos about the tournament, but this is a double cut that kind of wraps it up. And I hope that you find it interesting. Some of the things that I've learned from this tournament, the things that I've learned that I think can be applicable in some other places. So that's, uh, that is my wrap up of the KBC Augusta tournament and a little discussion about Bermuda grass uh, and zoysia grass and uh, seashore bass phallum and St. Augustine grass when it comes to drought tolerance. Um, for ATC from Shimonoseki, Japan, I am Micah Woods.